Oh yeah. It's going bye, down. Bye bye. Basement. Oh, okay. You been having a good week, Amanda? Yeah. Much better than last week, cause whoo, baby. Same. I was stressed last week. Heavy. August has been stressful as fuck. And it's over, like. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Yeah, you seen that post that said January, February, <laughs> March, April, May, June, July. Look. August. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Pretty much. We are back into the fall. We're back to pulling out the pumpkins and the Halloween decorations. And whew. Honestly, I feel like for me, I feel like all the months kind of went by slow. All the months went slow? For me. That's, that's crazy. I do not feel that. I mean, I feel I like the it. only month that flew by was like May. <laughs> I don't okay. know why. Okay. And maybe June, but all the other months, they felt very slow. August really felt slow. It is exhausting. August? Exhausting August. Hmm. Huh? Well, honestly, all of it's going so fast that I can't remember what I'm doing in these months. Like, that's really. <laughs> no, like, for real. Like, that's really how I feel. I don't even know what's happening, what I'm doing. Like, Bro, I can't even remember what I did two days ago. No, for real, though. Like, is that dead crazy? ass. I'm trying to realize, like, I'm trying to figure out, is that brain fog on an extreme level that I should be worried about? Or is life really just happening that fast? So, I thought it was cannabis. What? <laughs> you know I what? I smoke a lot of cannabis. Well, no, uh, I, let me not <laughs> say I smoke a lot of cannabis because I don't. You said what you said. Now I, I believe meant it. <laughs> that I smoke cannabis, period. I don't smoke a lot of cannabis. I smoke cannabis, though. If you say so. I mean, I feel a joint a day is not a lot. And it's a mini joint. It's not even a big one. Yeah, I don't think a joint a day is a whole lot. It's not. Compared to people that be sparking up five blunts. Five blunts? What you mean? And some big boys, too. Mm-mm. But I, honestly, I was like, maybe I just smoke too much weed. But if you're saying that you also feel like you can't remember things that happened two days ago. No, I can't. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to stop my cannabis intake. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say for you. Um, do what's going to be best for you. But yeah, I just can't remember these days. Okay. Somebody asked me what I did. Like, this was, like, beginning of the month when I was in Arizona. Somebody was like, oh, what did you do yesterday? And I was like, I don't know. And then I had to ask my friend what we did. And then I was like, oh, yeah, like, we did this, we did this. And, like, one of the things we did was got a tattoo. They were like, you don't remember getting a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> it's her every day. I was like, look, I just, I've, I've been so busy like your tattoo is mad cute though. i have thank you appreciate that and i i can tell that i am a friend because i literally noticed it as like as instantly that was crazy i was like Whoa. i pay attention to my friends <laughs> i'm sorry there's people who have known me for like three years who don't even know that i have a tattoo and i'm like so you don't see this whole arm just covered. yeah <laughs> wild times there's okay. a lot of people that don't pay attention they don't you're not observing at all and that's a problem yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. Danger. Welcome back to This Is Now <laughs> podcast. Here we are. We made it back. We did make it back. And we made it through August, too. What a blessing. Barely. Barely. <laughs> Yo, you got to take no, a kidding. photo of that, though. That kind of looks sick. We are actually recording in a new spot. Ah. And we get to see, like, all of the commotion in all downtown of the LA. Life. <laughs> Not all the commotion in downtown LA. Like, for real. All of the, the cars moving, the people riding. We just out here people watching as we record this new episode for you guys. Which I used to do a lot of in college. I love people, people watching. watching was my shit. <laughs> no, I 100% agree with that. I used to do the same thing. We used to go to downtown Columbia 
and we would sit on these little pillars that they had. <laughs> I love that. And we would just be watching. And then we would take the free ass, the free ass ride. They used to have this this these rides called Stripe. Come on and take a free ride, <laughs> free ride. <laughs> Come on and take a They was free meant ride. to pick up people that was hella drunk. <laughs> And we were all hella drunk, but we were drinking. Uh -huh. And we didn't have cars. Well, good job. But we would take the car because the, the ride was like they had to pick you up from a home. Mm -hmm. Oh. And drop you off at a home. Okay. So we would take the ride to a, a house. We don't know. Some random address. Oh, Lord. Right before you get to downtown. Mm -hmm. And we would get dropped off. Go eat at happy hour. And then we'll walk downtown and just people watch. Or we would go out to the bar. I love that. And then we'll turn around and take Stripe home <laughs> from the bar. Because they could pick you up from the bar like a good time. and take you home. But they, but that's it. Okay. It was a great time. Because Uber and Lyft. Was it Uber and Lyft? No. There was no Uber and Lyft. I'm about to Lyft. say they might not have been it, like No, they are Uber now. and Lyft didn't happen until taxi I graduated college. Mm -hmm. Like a couple years yeah. before I graduated. But when I got there, it was no Uber and Lyft. And we didn't have cars. Well, now they got Waymos. Which what is the just, fuck is a Waymo? The Waymo is the self-driving car that you, you know see what? everywhere. I've been and you literally can like on the app request a Waymo and like just ride in that joint. How much is it? I don't know. When I was in Arizona, they were like $12. I said, hell no. Nah. But they're only so like- how so far? Anywhere. It didn't matter. It was always $12. I was like, this is outrageous. They are instance. everywhere in Waymo. They are every Waymos are everywhere in Arizona. Like they're really popular out here too. Yeah. But in Arizona, I was like, everywhere I turned, it was like the dang little spinning things. Did you car. see Coco? Who's Coco? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing I said when somebody asked me <laughs> if I knew who Coco was. But then I realized when I seen it on the street one day, that's Coco. The little food delivery robot. Oh, I didn't see any of those in Arizona, but I love seeing those out here. I'm like, they can ah, be scary though, especially late adorable. at night. And them, I be seeing them in Hollywood all the time. Yeah. I be like, <laughs> and the eyes they be lighting up. Yes, yes, they kind of weird. I mean, look, robots are gonna take over the world and all of our jobs one day. So. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's just it is what it is. I mean, China building them up, and they look like real people. That's what I'm saying. They got real faces and real skin. I robot all over again. Will Smith was on to something. <laughs> exactly. Okay, we ain't come here to talk about the future. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Kalita. Or Kay. I'm Amanda. Just Amanda. <laughs> or Amanda. Yeah, because most people drop the A off my name, so whatever. Yeah, that's Amanda. <laughs> and I go by Kay, mostly. <laughs> Unless you know me, then. Thanks. But. You can call me by my first name. Sheesh. <laughs> okay. You no, know, that's how I really be. You know, I just feel it feel like it's weird for people to call you your like your nickname. I mean your real name if they don't know you. It just feels like intrusive. <laughs> I'm sick. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause my mama used to call me, you know, when you when you get in trouble, uh, your yes. mama say your full name. Yes. So that's I don't, true. you know, it's intrusive. Which is I think <laughs> it's intrusive. <laughs> Which is why I think I'm always thrown off when somebody does actually use the A in the beginning of my name. When somebody's yeah. actually like Amanda, I'm like, ooh, what I do? What <laughs> you know, because, yeah, because so many people just call me Amanda. Like, it's just so natural for them to just drop the letter in my name. So, yeah. I guess I get it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, professional-wise and, you know, when I'm at work and stuff, okay. But if I'm in, like, a social setting, I'll be like, don't call me by my name. Oh, I'm going to call you by your name. I do it. Besides Amanda. Because <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely do it. <laughs> oh, man. We we uh, we uh got a topic for y'all today. Yeah. I don't think I'm ready to spread the truth, though, Amanda. <sighs> I mean, I'm not. It's not. Look, <laughs> I'm already just stressed thinking about it. <laughs> I'm just I'm my thing is I don't even want to like divulge this as if though it's like oh this is the truth and what like i just this is the feeling for right now i'm ex yeah i'm like expressing my my thoughts and just you know sometimes you just gotta set it free <laughs> 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 yeah all right and so i was just thinking about you know business and entrepreneurship and all the things and <clears throat> there's a lot of entrepreneurs out here now right there's a lot of people who are trying to 
be entrepreneurs who are and then I think my other question is are influencers considered entrepreneurs I guess they can be I think so but if they don't have any other business besides like being an internet influencer is that considered being an entrepreneur yes 100 percent. because okay. you know i worked with a little bit of influence when i was working at the pr agency and you know they run themselves like a business yeah so they get they get uh they're like the face of their brand and, and they have a brand and, okay you know they have to fit a description for other brands to want to work with them so i think so okay but i don't know if they actually i mean if you're if you're good at what you do then you would consider yourself an entrepreneur. Oh, okay. but some people that's could fair. just be like, "I'm an influencer," and they right. don't even right. <laughs> exactly. I think that's you crazy. influence your cousins, baby. That's it. Mm. <laughs> no. Um. Okay, so that's cool. I'm here for that. But like, okay, back to the fact that there's just a lot of entrepreneurs out here. Um, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, and we all know that entrepreneur ship is not for everyone right i agree like that is just it's not for everyone just like going to have a job is not for everyone <laughs> <laughs> correct correct right and i think that's what i'm thinking about it's like okay so we have this job market that's really trash right now we have a lot of people in jobs who hate their jobs and like their jobs are trash and then we have a lot of entrepreneurs but the entrepreneurs are also not making it or not doing very well and then they need money to fund their entrepreneur endeavors like yeah. it's just this cycle right and so i was like at what what point do you look at it and be like realistically entrepreneurship actually isn't for me like i yes that's what kind of like culture is doing and it's almost like you hopped on the bandwagon and you try to do it so it's like at what point do you be like yo this actually isn't for me because i was just kind of like following what i thought everyone was doing and it seemed easy or when do you just think like maybe timing like I chose the wrong time to be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. because I think it's just you get really in your head about it when things don't necessarily go your way and like you got to really look at the whole thing is it not for you or is it just the timing of it mm. and I just want to know like how do you how do you know which way <laughs> like I don't know I don't know I mean that's a good question how, how do you know when it's time is up yeah I mean, because, because I think that's the other side of it is like, <clears throat> people look at it when, I think there's just, there's just so much noise around it. it let me say that. There's so much like chatter around entrepreneurship, it's right? It's a new fad. And so, yeah. A, well, I won't and say a fad. Yeah, exactly. It's like the new, um popular thing to do right is like be an entrepreneur like start your own business like you have this dream or this vision or whatever and now you want to run with it and blow it up and there's nothing wrong with that i believe we should be able to follow our dreams and mm -hmm. finally put you know our time and effort into what we want and making our you know dreams come true instead of running somebody else's but also like sometimes you have to be real because we a lot of us go to school for all these years and they don't necessarily, unless you knew at a young age, because maybe you just had that example or business runs in your family, unless you kind of had that example at a young age of like running a business, being an entrepreneur, what that looks like, what that feels like. And it's something that you also wanted, or let's say you ran a community and you saw a need and you were like, Ooh, I know how I can solve that need. So let me start this business for it. Unless that was your mindset and you went into school for business. I don't feel like a lot of people really know what they're asking for or getting into no, when they try entrepreneurship. Not. I don't even think, even if you, okay, so you said a whole lot of things. <laughs> but one thing, I don't even think, even if you were brought up in a family where there was a lot of business owners, you would even still be ready because everybody's journey as an entrepreneur is different. True. And some people just, I'm not going to say some people just have the skill because entrepreneurship takes it takes a lot, you know, mm -hmm. it's skill, it's um, not even talent. Like, it's a difference between being a singer and learning how to sing. But I feel like being an entrepreneur, it's like, like you said, like you have a service and you want to serve or you have a dream to serve. I always wanted to have a business, to be honest. Like, when I, when I was growing up, I literally wanted to be, I'm going to run it down, y'all. Y'all going to be cracking up. <laughs> But I wanted to be the next Lisa Leslie. Okay. 
Um, I am. I'm only five six. <laughs> right. But I wanted to be the next Lisa Leslie, and I also saw myself as a fashion mogul. I wanted a boutique, and I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. So I wanted a fashion brand boutique slash spa. Because okay. I was going to have my masseuse license. Okay. <laughs> and at this boutique spa, you were going to be able to go shopping for clothes. I love it. Um, get styled by me, obviously. <laughs> and get a massage and a glass of wine. I love it. That's what I wanted. That's, I, fine. I, that's Those are the things that I was passionate about. Mm-hmm. I'm not a therapist, but I help a lot of people. I'm not a masseuse, but I heal a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I work in fashion. So, I mean, I would say there, yeah, there is a lot of people that probably are like me when I was a little girl. That's what I dreamed of. And some people dreamed of working a great job, buying a nice house. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I dreamed of those things too, but in a different way. So then let me ask you this. If, because like, I I love how you just like tie that together, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm not this, but I'm this. And so that way it's still, so if that's the case, then do you feel like, you're kind of living in your dream right now, or do you consider it a failure because it's not exactly how you mapped it out? No, I honestly feel like I'm living in my dream right now. And I was going to say another thing, like what we ask for compared to what we get, it's not, it's not really up to us to see the full vision. You know, you got to say what you want, go towards what you want. And, be okay with however it plans out to be. And that's mm-hmm. that's kind of like the thing with entrepreneurship. I just think that we're so used to like working for somebody and it kind of ar- already be done for us. But then when you think about this person who created this business, let's say CVS, that person had a dream to have a store that's convenient for everybody. Mm-hmm. We don't know the backstory of CVS or whoever the hell even created CVS. We don't know right. nothing about it, but I'm pretty sure that it was damn right hard to yeah. do a CVS. Um, and then another thing I want to say just about entrepreneurship, I feel like it's something about entrepreneurship and black people in particular. I think that is a generational like, I don't know how to put it, but I feel like it's a generational like thing that we all want because of the lack of uh accessibility to things and ownership to things Hmm. for some reason i just feel it's innate to us like when we think about our ancestors and stuff they build communities yeah based off what they could do naturally now as we can go back to hustle culture and how we talked about hustle culture (laughs) and how you said it's not a spirit Mm-hmm. You know, and I do believe that because of everybody want to seem like they got it. Right. And this damn world is high as fuck. If we were in a space where we didn't have to earn so much to feel comfortable, mm-hmm. I think it'll be different. But the fact that but the fact that we straight up out here wanting to own a business so we can buy a Bugatti. Stupid. <laughs> Instead of, you know, even though yeah. you say I want to own a business so I can have autonomy over my time and my family and I want to spend more time. Honestly, baby, you own that business because you want a $500 million house. But also, that's what I was, no, but that's real. <laughs> that's real because people want stuff. And that's the thing. I think that's the real thing too when I think about like business. Like realistically, God knows like the motives of your heart. Your mouth says one thing, yeah. but your heart absolutely tells the truth. Ain't lie to God. And God knows the motives of your heart. And sometimes I feel like, yeah, like, you know, like you're saying you want X, Y, and Z, but you really just wanted to stunt, to flex, to try and make somebody else Stun feel smaller than. <laughs> <laughs> you want somebody else to feel like smaller, like you're big, like, you know. Like you're you, doing something. Yeah, better. exactly. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think the motive is a little, so there's nothing wrong with wanting better for yourself, right? Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with like saying like, hey, I want to get out of my neighborhood and like be the first one. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just a matter of like, you can't have like that pridefulness and that like you're shitting on everybody type of attitude afterwards. Absolutely. Like, yes, you did it, but let's let's try to be. How humble. did you do? It? Yeah, like and, and then the scheming, you know, the scheming yeah. and the scamming. That's where that's where that's where it gets a little unfavorable. That's where it becomes unfavorable. Mm-hmm. But I understand what you're saying too. Like, 
because it's hard being an entrepreneur. It is. And I think, <clears throat> like like I was saying, like I mean, if you went to school for business, I think you already have a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like when you're in school, they don't necessarily teach you about like training your mindset to be like, you know, resilient through this. Like they don't necessarily no. teach you the best time management because we know some people be barely making it through college anyway because they time management is shit. Like yeah. they don't teach you time management. They don't teach you how to like be on top of your time and like prior to rise thing. Like that's not what college teaches you. They teach you basically how to be another robot in this exactly. corporate world working for other people. They just yeah. produce duplicates. So yeah. like if that's the case, when you move into entrepreneurship and you start hitting all these hurdles and like all these walls, it's like, do you look at it and be like, yo, like maybe it's the timing. Like maybe I started too soon mm -hmm. before having all the facts. Like maybe I didn't research my market. Maybe I didn't research Which like pricing. Most of us don't. Maybe, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, maybe we just jumped into. Can I afford this timing. right now? Right. Like the money that you got to put into the business to yeah. even make money. Like, is it the timing or is it really like, yo, this just ain't for you dog like just go work a corporate job climb the ladder like this just ain't for you <laughs> because it's hard it's hard I mean, on one like, side you feel like a failure on the other side it's like oh, no man. well i'm not going to fail and like even when it feels like i'm down like well this happened that happened and i'm still like it, I, yeah <laughs> when is enough Balancing when is emotion yeah no i i'm here with you like there there'd be definitely times where i just be like yo forget this like you know because it takes a lot of brain power um i guess enough is enough when it's not your dream no more or mm, if it's if it's becoming too um frustrating for you to actually run the business if it's causing you depression and stress and you know people say blood blood sweat and tears into their business and that's very mm -hmm. true Fact. we both know that blood mm -hmm. sweat and tears but at the same time if it's like causing you uh, uh, if it's corrupting you, right? Then that's a, that's when you know. I mean, I I feel like, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, I had a business before. Mm -hmm. You know, because it was before, yeah. And then it, it probably became too stressful. All of the things, all of the overhead costs, all of the planning, and all the other stuff that make sense to have the business, it didn't make sense anymore. Honestly, like I be I be there sometimes, and then Same. I just be like, "But then, what I'm gonna do when if I feel like I don't have nothing that's mine?" See, I've never had that feeling. I I, I get that though. That's kind of heavy. Yeah, like I've never had that feeling, but I definitely have had the feeling where it's like, "Do I even keep going anymore? Like, what's the point?" Because I don't know. It's it's a matter of you feel like you keep hitting the wall. Yeah, and I think I get very frustrated, and then also I'm still trying to like learn having grace for myself in some ways, mm. and so I just beat myself up about all the things that like I did wrong, or I wish I knew before, or all the money that I spent or the like stuff that in you certain places. Have done. Yeah, and it's like, well, I spent all this money here, and like it still didn't work out. Like you know, like you're spending the money, and it's like they tell you scare money don't make money so yeah. sometimes you do have to spend the money absolutely and then <laughs> later on but when you don't see the reward as quickly as you would want to yeah and then now you're still like struggling or especially trying to make when you money. need money exactly it's hard it's to feel like, happy it's just about so it so frustrating and then it's like yes i just be like it was a waste and i just be so frustrated yeah so, and, and i was really just in my thoughts and in my feelings the other day i was like so what do you know like when is it when is it like okay my timing was off or when, when is it TKO? And also, when is it just pride? To some people, TKO. Wait, go back. What? Like, so we, well, I, I want to just hear that line. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> is it timing or is it TKO? Oof. <laughs> Look. I feel like that was a word for somebody. TKO, technical knockout, baby. Like, when, just let it's it over. go. <laughs> <sighs> because it also be pride sometimes. Like, it sometimes is. I think our pride gets in the way too. And we do end up doing more damage to ourselves. Like, yeah. yeah, you don't have to necessarily look at something as a failure just because you let it go for mm -hmm. the betterment of yourself. You don't. You know yeah, it doesn't have to be. And a I don't think everyone sees it that way. Yeah. And sometimes it's still really hard 
to like make yourself believe that even if you do let it go. And I think so it'd be pride. It's like my pride is going to make me stay here and I'm going to try and then I don't want to be embarrassed. And You know what I'm saying? So you yeah. just hold on. I think you but, have to stop the, the dysfunctional thinking. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just I just pulled that word from my stomach because because <laughs> it was in your soul. <laughs> I honestly I have a I, my my therapist told me to do an exercise this weekend and I I couldn't get through it. But that word dysfunctional thinking is basically she wanted me to write down my functional thoughts compared to, versus my dysfunctional thoughts mm-hmm. and where they come from. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm gonna get real real with y'all real quick. I have a mother wound. So a lot of my dysfunctional thoughts, and they, they'll tell you this, if you have a mother wound or if you have a, a father wound, a lot of your, your negative thinking about yourself, you say it in the tone of your parent, mm-hmm. you know? And so my, my dysfunctional thoughts are definitely in the tone of my mother. Mm-hmm. Um, but you got to stop the dysfunctional thinking. And another thing, Amanda, you, you said it before a couple episodes ago about hus- hustle culture. When you dismiss the monetization of why your business is important to you, yes, it's going to make you money. Yes, it's going to, you know, change your life. But if you are really wanting to have a voice, have a community, then that's not a failure. You know, if you're, right. if you're not really making a lot of money or you're not able to live off all of the work you're putting, in, putting into your business, you know, you have to figure out what's most important to you about having your business, like a church. Yeah. If they ain't making a lot of, if they ain't getting a lot of, of the members, you know, putting into the collection plate so they can build up and they can have a better facility, the pastor don't get scared. <laughs> it depending on the type of pastor. It depends on the type of pastor because <laughs> yeah, like, he oh. probably using that collection money to pay for his Bugatti. Oh Lord. <laughs> Oh, no, but for real, like that's how you have to think. I, that's how I think about like my dreams and stuff. And even though like I'm not a millionaire off my business, but it does make me feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And is it a struggle every day to figure it out? Yes. And it, and the society makes it even hard. Nobody fucking know nothing about no social media. Fact. Twenty years ago, fact. People was pu- putting up businesses. People was outside selling. You know, it wasn't this big old phenomenon about being a business owner and making millions let's of dollars make a market a and year. a reel and run an ad campaign and ah! let's have a funnel funnel this funnel that oh, funnel this God, ass the funnel. Yeah. i'm sick of it <laughs> I'm, <not funnels. laughs> I'm sick of it too because <laughs> honestly i just want to you know i just want to provide some cute products for people right and I also want to provide some inspiration for some people. Exactly. But then it seems like this person over here, because it's a popularity contest. It is. Let's be real. It is. You know, and I, I, I don't give a fuck about being popular because I ain't for everybody. But at the Correct. same time, like, you got to figure out how to play the game. But I, I think it's different, but it's not different at the same time. I just think the way the society is moving so fast and how we have so much access to things in front of us i think it just hinders that's what i'm saying hinders it's too people much like noise. us it's too much noise. yeah and shut the it's fucking exhausting. noise down shut it down amanda it's exhausting you know you you doing amazing it's it's stressful but you're doing amazing you know i i can i can see i can see it coming you probably can't because you're doing all the work right <laughs> literally but i can see head it coming. down deep in it just head down deep in it <sighs> you know <laughs> And I ain't trying to pay another person to help me do shit. Right. <laughs> I mean, and realistically, I would if I was there. Because, like, I think it would be amazing to have a team. I think just based off of my love for just having the right type of community, even if you have the right, like, team, that is a form of a community, right? And you can grow together, yes. learn from each other. Like, what Build one person together, can do, yep. the other person can't. And it's just, it becomes amazing. Yeah. But realistically, it's like, I don't have the budget for that right now. The way the brand is running, like real, if I let somebody else touch it, yes, maybe they could do a little bit more with it. But also, is it going to match like my vision and what I like and what I love? And then so that's where it's like, yeah. can I really let go of the reins of control and let somebody else be there anyway? And but, who do you really trust? Exactly. Because I just feel like some people just be out to get you. Mm-hmm. And that's just real. I ain't even, I ain't even front like... I'd just be like, I'd rather do this shit myself. I'd yes. rather figure it out. I'd rather take three months to figure out 
how to work Wix. I mean, how to work Shopify. Mm -hmm. Then to pay a person. And then, like you said, what if it's not even my vision? Right. Then I got to go back and do it anyway. Exactly. Or is that just us being um, controlling? I mean, that's why I said, like, you have to learn how to release the reins of control because it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of that's just the control factor. Like, you want to be in control of it. And then it's also, I don't want to say, like, I so much have, like, the trust issue of it, but it's, like, is it worth it to me? Yeah. Like, does the outcome, does it match? Like, you know, kind of like the payment. Like, so, yeah. wait, so I've built my own website three different times right. now. Like, I've built two different websites, and one of them I've built three times. Yeah. And then I paid somebody um, last year or year before mm -hmm. to re- build my second website because I was trying to revamp it, give it like a new look and this and that, whatever okay. they did the work. And like, it was great. And like, realistically at that time I did, I had to hand that over to somebody else because I personally just did not have that time anymore. Like the time yeah. that I had when I built the first four, I didn't have that kind of time yeah. to build this. Time, time's time. changing. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like I'm, I'm busy. So I didn't have that kind of time. So I did in order to not really just stall everything install myself Again, in business yeah. and whatnot i had to i had to hand it over to someone but yeah like i do look at it now and i'm like okay well i did that i don't necessarily like it's great and it's, it has a new look and all of this and maybe i wouldn't have put this together myself but it's not like it's anything special or extravagant yeah. like i don't necessarily just like fall over it want to share it with everyone yeah. it's not like it does like these crazy numbers it's not like sales are peaking like you know what i'm saying so it's like the yeah. money that i spent for you to do it because I didn't have the time. It doesn't necessarily feel like a waste, but it's also like it doesn't match like because the benefit. Like if that's the case, I could have just held off yeah, and waited to do it and myself to do and it not yourself. had to spend that kind of money. So yeah. okay. So remember remember I was I was on the phone with somebody and she was like, and then what? And then what? <laughs> when I was talking about my business. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, and then what? And then what? Then what are you going to do after that? So that's pretty much what we what you spend your time doing as an entrepreneur. You have to, and then what? So it's like, okay, now that I have a, a page, a website that's, you know, pretty decent for people to buy from, you got to have a funnel. Right. You got to have a landing page. You mm -hmm. got to get people to buy. And that's the part that's hard. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the part, like owning a business, starting a business, Logo to business, products, boom. The hardest part is finding the customers and getting Fact. them to buy. Yes. That is the, and I honestly like, I kind of know a strategy, but I don't follow the strategy myself because I got a million and other 1,000 things that's <laughs> making me money, you know, and I can't get a grasp on everyday people because I don't have time. Right. So I understand what you mean. And I, I go back and forth too. And it's so funny because I actually was going back and forth about wardrobe styling. Mm -hmm. But honestly, bro, it's because we're in a recession. Mm -hmm. That's why we're feeling so um, consumed with being a business owner instead of being fulfilled behind it all the way. It's because we're in a recession. Everything is so high. We're stressed about financial things because of the recession. Yeah. Two years ago. I was jumping for joy on in my business and I was in this. I wouldn't say I was in the same space, mm -hmm. but I was in a, a familiar like space. Right. I was growing. I feel like this year I've grown a lot in my business. I really have. And you have Which too. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. She got new products. Y'all. I do. She got bucket hats <laughs> in different colors. Yeah. And also you have way more business knowledge than you ever had. Think about true. it like that. Like That's true. Last year, you don't have as much knowledge that you have this year because it's a brand new year. That's real. You did new things. But, like, honestly, I feel like a lot of the disposition in your mind is because we're in a re recession and we all stressed out about finances. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we that's, that's not wrong. Yeah. It's just. We over it. A fact. Like, literally, that's all that I can think about is, like, how just over it I am. Like, why? Is this life right now? Why? Do and I how do much this every longer day? is it going to be? And when can I just 
not like so much just have fun. And this is the thing. This is my other thing. I think I have to, because I don't want, because realistically, like my summer has been amazing. This is probably like the best summer I've had in a long time. Well, wow. No, I mean, yes, it's been a good summer. Like I I, I was I've you. always enjoyed my summers because I just like the heat and like, yeah. I just, realistically, I, I enjoy life. I try not to be super just down in the dumps. You're a happy but, person. Like, I mean, I guess I am, <laughs> but this summer was great. Like I was in Jamaica in May. I was home for a little bit in June. Then I was in Colorado in July, Arizona in August. Like I've been gone and all summer. Been yeah. And not only that, like I've had, I've actually had business, like all my photography, but like, you know, like things really have been good, but at the same time, it's, and all the good, of course, we always focus and highlight on the not so good and what's yeah. irritating us or stressing us. And so I'm sitting here and I'm like, yeah, like I'm over it. Like, well, it's not to be like, you know, like life is just terrible because realistically life is not like somehow, some way God is still showing up. He's provided like I've been able to do all these incredible things and all of that. But it's like the little things that I just wish I could get the, the things that I have put on the altar multiple times. And it's like, God, I just want to see your hand in it. That be the stuff where I just be like, you're not moving quick enough. Ah! <laughs> Okay, let me ask you a question. I might be getting all up in your business, but I'm getting all up in my business too. And I'm asking this question because I already know the answer. But okay, so I'm you just, just want the people to know the answer? I want you to hear it. <laughs> the question. Have you came up with a business strategy and worked it consistently for six months? <laughs> no. Exactly. But that's because I don't feel like I have that knowledge. Like realistically. But I think you do have that knowledge. But I don't because I don't like you running a whole I, photography business right now. But I don't like have a strategy. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, I don't so know. You don't I don't strategy. know what business strategy okay. is, number one. Okay. And then when it comes time for a business plan, I remember like everyone says like you need a business plan, yes. right? And I agree with that. But I really don't even feel like I know what, know that, what that is because there's certain things like, especially when I was applying for like business grants and stuff, and I was looking over the applications and what they wanted. I was like, these questions are like college level <laughs> questions right now, because what they do you mean? Plan. I don't they, know. They, they, what's they the prompts from the business. No, and, and, and it's yeah. smart. Like it's what you should have. College but, grade A. <laughs> exactly. Ivy League, Yale. And my thing is. <laughs> Give <me> Yale. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Business Major school. Major facts. And so yeah. I'm just like. If I don't, especially when it's like the revenue ones, right? Like what's your projected blah, blah, blah. If I don't know because I don't even have consistency right now, there's no way I can give you a projection. Like, yeah, yeah I can make up this crazy number of what I would like to make. But then again, going back to the strategy, my strategy to do that based off of the market that I guess I kind of have right now, girl, that is trash. Like not yeah. saying that like, I love no, my you, people, right? Like yeah. thank you for all those who have supported me this far along the way. But it's just like, the market that we're in and the market that I'm in right now is not like a market yeah. of money. So it's hard. It is definitely hard. Um, and I agree with the whole business plan, business strategy thing. Cause you know, I, I feel like I know a strategy. I feel like I want to implement a strategy, but also like you said, do I know enough about it? Did you put it in your book? Yes. Okay, good. So then you know a strategy. <laughs> so run the play. I mean, yeah, but also just like you saying, I know the strategy. I feel like you know some things too, you know, because you got to, sh- Amanda, you know, I, I'm going to just lay off her. But no, I do. I do. <laughs> I do know a strategy, but also, like I said, I'm focusing on some other things um, that are more important to me right now. Um, which makes sense. Which makes sense. But also, it's not right because I need to be running this fucking play. Um, but yeah, like, Having a having a strategy is important. Having a business plan is important. And like you said in the beginning of this conversation, people be out here starting businesses with not a plan. Not a plan at all. And you, if you want to start a business, to be honest, we need a five-year plan, 10-year plan before you even start the business. But That's we don't know I'm that saying. until you start a business. That's what I'm saying. And we just be wanting something with our name, with our logo on it. We would want to right. have an LLC. Like That's what we be wanting. But no, you're right. You, but you got it, Amanda. I feel like you, I feel like you've heard many 
you've 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 had a lot of business mentors around you. I have. You've had heard a lot of plays. She's heard a lot of strategies. But also Amanda is struggling between timing or TKO. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Literally. You know, but love vibes is it's a it's a it's a community. That's where you need to be. I mean it is, and I think right that's there. the biggest thing is like I don't think Start with yeah, setting started, the community. Yeah, I don't think I've started yes. like I don't know so much well yeah, I haven't started necessarily that community in the right way. I don't think I've gotten the message of love vibes fair. out fully. That's fair. Like do people even know what it means, you exactly. know? So it's it's like kind of like starting from scratch, like restarting and being like, yo, this is what we stand for. But still how do I market that? How do I get that out? Because just doing it on Instagram is not enough. If you enough, have business like... strategies and you're free, 99, <laughs> right. please jump in our DMs. Right. <laughs> Swing our way. And we are please. dead ass serious. Yeah. Do a two for one special. You'll find us on TikTok. <laughs> a two for one. Look. But no, for real. Get like, at our business pages. strategies is important. Um, and I be, I be, I be teeter tottering because I be like, all right, now nah, I'm ready. Like double dutch, you know. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, "Oh, I'm ready," and just like double dutch, I can't jump that long. Look, it's, and, and and you know, and it's not right. But I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna be real smooth with y'all. Like, it's not easy owning the business. Y'all see the lights, camera, action, you know. But That's... it's very tough. And I, my business did some numbers this year. Good, you know, it did. Yeah. But also, not consistently. I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's because all of it us. but it did numbers. It did some numbers, but consistently, you need to be consistent. You know, right. and the moment I say, which I I wholeheartedly believe, and also I wholeheartedly believe in Amanda, that these two businesses has what it takes, but we need to focus on our communities. We do in a real way. And I, yeah, that's the difference. The and difference I just, I guess I also just can't overthink it because that's cannot. the other thing. Like, I think overthinking will put you in the joy. dumps. Yeah. Like it'll put you in the dumps because of course it's like, okay, like if I post, five, cause I'm a, like, let me keep it a hundred percent. Right. I love the brand. God is dope. Yes. Like those, I love them. Follow everything they do. Look, absolutely. And this is the thing. They be putting out shirts, t-shirts, like clockwork. But they have a not community. Not only do they put, correct, they have a community. Yes. But also, they're not afraid to, like, beat you upside the head with it. I get at least three to five text messages from them a day. And you think I you'll be above I get emails them. from them. Yes. Like, and, like, and the thing is, like, it's not that serious to me. Like, I just open it, swipe it away. Like, I don't really care. But then me, when it comes time for, like, posting, I'm like, Oh, well, I've posted about that like two times already this week. That's These embarrassing. Let me put something else and then don't post for two weeks. Go ghost. Yeah. Like, let me, oh, I talked about that too much already. Like, yeah. that's awkward. Like, it seems like I'm desperate. Let me switch my post up. Or what let me did just our podcast coach tell <laughs> like, us? Dang. What did our podcast coach tell us? Girl, he said people need like 20 touches before, Period. They, before they even buy 20 anything. 20 fucking touches. And, and you said, like, no one trusts you. Two times 10. <laughs> No, for real though. Yeah. But, I mean, I get it because we're 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 still thinking from a consumer standpoint and mm -hmm. not a a a business owner standpoint, and we need to get out of that. But, and I feel like that'll be the only way we really become successful. But I'm glad that you brought that up today because I feel like a not a not enough people talk about how hard it is running a business and how often people feel like giving up on a business because it's so hard mm -hmm. because they all I, I just want my business my products are s sexy you know i got fire Facts. jewelry i got fire scarves i got yep. fire sunglasses Facts. amanda got some fire hats some fire t-shirts like she got she got she can put love vibes on anything and i just love a love vibe <laughs> you know but yeah. why is it not moving right because we don't people like us but they don't know us right and yeah. also, we probably don't have enough people that trust us. So we Facts. don't have a community. Facts. Yeah. I mean, the podcast almost didn't make it to season two. <laughs> right. We didn't feel like we had a community, but we here. Girl, I didn't know. We had a lot of things. I said, <laughs> do we have a community? Do we got a budget? Do we got timing? Do we got a friendship? <laughs> do we got a friendship? <laughs> this bitch. Kay told me right before we started this podcast, 
if we not friends, just say that. Like, so, every time we see each other, I think for the last month, every time, no, 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 every time we see each other for the last month, there has been a comment that we are not friends. So, Hold on. we need to nip it in the butt. I got a scenario for y'all. <laughs> oh, boy. If your friend lives 500 feet away <laughs> from <laughs> your boyfriend's house, and you go to your boyfriend's house for five days, but you never even text your friend and say, hey, I'm next door. But then a week later, they tell you they've been 500 feet away for five days. <laughs> what would your question be? It, it wouldn't be if we're not friends. What do you mean? I'm I, people? Look here. I am not a bugaboo. I do not try to be in the way i don't try to bug people i know i'll be busy but you could have just said hey girl i'm next door i would have been like hey i don't believe it yes okay you don't be home you be at work people be over you be I did have family busy here, but also so, you could have definitely went out to we could have went out to dinner we could have walked up and down the street broadway you know what i'm saying i could have just i could have just came outside my door and you could have came outside the door we could have just waved you know what i'm saying but it's cool it's crazy because okay, when she lived farther from me i see her more actually yeah i mean not that she lived close to me but her men's live 500 feet away that's so crazy okay <laughs> is it 500 feet probably so About. maybe like yeah but i ain't mad at i just be i just be messing with her because <laughs> she needs somebody to mess with her you know what? I, I do what I'm going to always do. I'm going to mind my business. And um, I don't know what beef y'all got. but uh. I ain't got no beef with you, Amanda. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm glad we brought up this topic today. Because it's, it's been hard out here. Um, and before we wrap this up, because we ain't going to stay long. You know, we, we said a whole lot to y'all today. And now we probably got into some business on the skin. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> y'all gonna be all right. Yeah, y'all gonna be all right. <laughs> but like we promised, we gonna we gonna always uh, leave y'all with an affirmation and a scripture. Yeah. And so I feel like this affirmation is right on target. On point. It's on point. <laughs> so I had to kind of think about it a lot today. I was like, wait a minute. I, I had one affirmation and it was about abundance and money and mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of those. Okay. But I thought we needed something more today because okay. I just feel like the children's spirit is just calling for it. Okay. I'm I am it. worthy. I am enough. Amen to that. They are two sentences, but they go together. <laughs> right. We go right. together. <laughs> Real bad. I said, ooh, <laughs> baby. Is hey, I love long? you. You my everything. That's money long. I can't even. That is definitely sexy red. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh. But yikes. um, you know when she say, know. "Fuck a red and rain," that song is a stupid song. But sorry, sexy red, your song ain't stupid. Ah, <laughs> no. But the affirmation for today is, and I just want all of y'all to just take a minute and do a deep breath <laughs> with me. I am worthy. I am enough. Amen to that. Amen to that. Love it. And so I will transition over to the scripture. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's on brand. It kind of is. It kind of relates to everything I said all throughout the podcast. I well, said it was too noisy. <laughs> okay. And so it's so funny because the Sunday sermon was very on point and this actually comes out of this sunday sermon um it was not what we, what the sermon was taught from but it was brought up to reiterate a point oh, okay and so it's we love mark a sermon <laughs> approval we love a scripture to prove a point it's mark 4 verse 24 through 25 um and it says consider carefully what you hear he continued with the measure you use it will be measured to you and even more whoever has will be given more Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them. Um, wow. And so it's really just a reminder to like pay attention to who and what has your ear. I think especially at times like this yes. when you could feel very 
overwhelmed, when it's a lot, when you're just trying to figure all the things out for your life, like be careful as to like who and what has your ear because everything and everyone is not of God, from God. And when you know everybody else's and everything else's voice more than you know his, it can lead you in some wrong directions. Mm. So that could mean that it could lead you into entrepreneurship and that was never your calling. <laughs> and now you made your own life difficult. Or it could be that you're just doing things in a way that also is not meant for you. So either way, the point is, you know, consider carefully what you hear, who has your ear, what has your ear in these times. And remember that there's a lot of distractions out there. So, yeah. Yeah, you just really wanted to eat the girlies and the boilies up today. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> no, but that's real. I love that. Um, Thank you for tuning in today to yeah. This Is Now Podcast. We appreciate y'all. Again, I... <laughs> Again, I'm your host, Kay. You can find me on Instagram at I am Shade Brand. That's I-A-M-S-A-D-E-B-R-A-N-D. Ooh. And you can find me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just how fast you spelt it. I said, oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm Amanda, obviously. You can find me at smile underscore the number four underscore Amanda. I ain't about to spell none of that because it's very clear. <laughs> Yeah, you got those underscores in there, so. Yeah, that's the home hub for everything. Yeah, don't nobody know how to spell Sade. Correct. They, they spell it in like five different ways. That's crazy. I know, it is. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace. Bye.